Hello Ride On people. Now, I'm a bit of a fanboy of modular helmets. They're just so practical, and particularly if you live in a hot climate, it's nice to be able to flip up the front now and then. However, they're often heavy, or heavier than a conventional helmet. And also, um, it's nice to try a different helmet now, I think. <laughs> Simple as that, really. So I've decided to buy a Climb Creox Pro, and uh, there's a few reasons for that. But uh, let's see what you get in the box first. Well, first of all, you get a uh, pin lock insert, absolutely mandatory when it's uh, rainy or foggy. Uh, they work a treat. You get a replacement clear visor, if you don't want the standard visor, which I'll get to in a second. You get this uh, nice adventure style peak, which just screws on the top of the helmet if you want it to look like an adventure helmet. You can actually configure it kind of four different ways to look kind of like a, a sport uh, helmet or an enduro helmet or a venture helmet, etc. So I'll just give you that in the box. A few bits and bobs, which are just kind of like uh, replacement pins and stuff, and some stickers and general information. So let's go to the main event, get the helmet out, give it a coat of looking at. This is the Klein Creos Pro. This is kind of in road configuration at the moment. Um, I guess uh, if I get the peak back out, you can see roughly what it would look like with the peak on. I'm not going to fit that just this second, but basically, it's pretty much like an Arai XD4, basically. Now, why did I go for this particular helmet? Uh, I could have bought anything, an Arai, a Shui, an AGV, anything like that. Well, I wanted to try something very, very light, and the outer shell of this is proper pre-preg carbon fiber. So it's incredibly light. In fact, it only weighs about 3.1 pounds. Now, if you look at something like a Shui Hornet, uh, that's closer to four pounds. So it's like 25% lighter, and that's a hell of a lot on a long day's ride. So you're getting kind of, it's not the exact science, but, for argument's sake, on a 300 mile ride, you're getting 25% less fatigue by wearing this than a shield worn it. But there are other factors such as you know, aerodynamics and that kind of stuff come into play. Now, this particular helmet is both ECE and DOT approved, so it's pretty strong. And that brings me to the other key point uh, why I wanted this helmet is the it doesn't have a traditional um, polystyrene EPS liner. Instead, it has something called uh, choroid, which is like, think of it as like um, a stack of straws, like long cylindrical tubes, and they're designed to compress under load. And uh, I think uh, Klein claims something like 30% better dispersal of energy uh, versus a, a, a traditional EPS liner. And I think it's something that will become quite prolific within the trade. And the reason why it's not uh, huge with other manufacturers already, I think, is more a case of they will have to tool up to change their decades and decades of working with traditional polystyrene EPS liners. And uh, that costs money, and so they're a bit reluctant to do that. But I think in time, uh, as uh, you know, the rules and regs on helmet uh, testing get ever more stringent, I think they will probably have to move to something like this. Uh, anyway, it's interesting and I wanted to try it. Uh, and one of the other benefits of that is, uh, not only is it theoret theoretically better in a crash, it's also better for flowing airflow through those tubes. And also uh, it is lighter as well, so it helps with the lightness. Now, on the back here, you have some pretty stylish exhaust vents. However, they are not, you cannot open or close those, they're permanently open. On the front here, you've got a nice single, nice firm, easy to do with the big gloved hands, um, forehead vent. And here you've got, again, a really nice lever. It's very large and uh, you can kind of <clears throat> increase the airflow up and down. And it's a nice large vent. So I was looking for a bit of airflow moving to 
uh, a solid helmet. I'll still probably wear my modular uh, a lot as well, but I wanted to give this a try. Now, other key features that I really liked about this helmet, uh, one, it has a, uh, has a um, transitions lens. And this lens uh, will turn dark in, uh, in daylight and sunshine, and it will turn crystal clear at nighttime. Now I've tried one of these lenses before from Klein and it's superb. You're convinced it's not working, everything looks like you're wearing a clear visor, except you're not getting any glare from the sun, but then you stop at the traffic lights and you look at yourself in the, in the, the mirror and you can't see your face, it just looks jet black on the outside. And so that's pretty cool. And with a white helmet, I think that will look pretty pretty nice, quite Star Wars-ish. Um, I don't much care for the, the coloured versions of this, but in actual fact, I didn't have a choice because uh, I went to a few shops and they were sold out everywhere in my size, which is large. And uh, this was literally the only helmet I could get in my size. And I do happen to like the white colour scheme, uh, which features these kind of uh, reflective bits on the sides and the back, which I quite like as well. Um, I bought this at Woolies in uh, Marietta. Jean-Marie is uh, a really nice French guy in charge of uh, all of the the clothing there been there many years very very knowledgeable check out jean marie uh, woolies in marietta if you want a climb helmet and you are local other things are quite light were that the visor can be taken off easily with these little tabs here you don't need any tools you can just turn a quarter turn with your finger and they pop off very simple and easy to do um, what else can i tell you about this helmet that i like Okay, inside it is very, the interior is very nice. These side bits are very, very, very soft, almost like a, almost like a kind of suede, um, almost kind of Alcantara type finish. Very, very nice. Uh, feels like it would uh, moist, uh, moist, wick moisture very easily. Another thing I really like is the interior. I'm not going to pull it out today. I'll probably do that a different day when I fit my uh, climb cardo to this particular unit. But all the interior is just Velcro. There's no poppers. So in theory, again, it makes it nice and easy to rip the liner out uh, on a weekend when you're not riding and throw it in the wash and get your freshness back inside your helmet, which is another key thing that I really like. Now, another key thing that I really like about this helmet is the locking mechanism. So you have a little red tab here. You can pull on the red tab with gloved hands and that will uh, release the, the clasp. When you get it close back, you just let go of it. Strong magnet pulls it together and it is fully locked. You cannot pull that apart. It's very, very tough, very sturdy. Again, super easy. Just pull that red tab to release, and then you, it's hard to do it back to front here with the camera. You hold it close together, you get it within an inch or so, and the magnets will just pull it together. Really nice and simple, as strong as a D-lock, uh, but without the hassle. So we like that as well. So what else can I tell you? Uh, the um, the tool free uh, shield or visor is uh, anti scratch naturally. Um, it is Senna uh, 10U compatible, so you, you can actually uh, fit the Senna very comfortably into this helmet. I'm not a fan of Senna. Uh, the problems that I had with Senna um, intercom systems is enough really to put me off for life, and, and similar for several other friends. And we will move to uh, uh, Cardo Pack Talk Bolds. I think there's about 14 of us now, and we're extremely happy. So I should be putting a, a Cardo Pack Talk Bold on here. I'll probably use a sticky mount and just mount the speakers. Um, and I will also probably set this up for vlogging as well, so that I can use it as a vlogging helmet. Now I still have uh, the sticker on the visor, and I still have the price sticker which is $699. This is not a cheap helmet, but I think it's kind of worth it spec-wise. Um, we've got that groundbreaking corduroy, 
Choroid even interior, carbon fiber shell, it's super super light. You've got a transition lens, no messing about with the internal lens or swapping lenses. You've got huge uh, ventilation uh, here and on the forehead. You've got that fig lock system, they call this, for this easy strap system. So you're getting a lot. This is a very cool helmet, it may cost six. Uh, may cost seven hundred dollars, but then you know if you want an Arai or Shui equivalent, you're going to pay that, and then chances are it won't be anywhere near this light. It won't be full carbon fiber. It won't have the fig lock system for the chin strap. It won't have the uh, choroid interior for extra protection and airflow, and it won't have the transition lens to move from light to dark. And I think uh, it's a pretty stylish looking helmet as well. Well, that's very subjective, obviously. So you pay money, you take a choice, and I will be riding uh, on a 600 mile journey, uh, overnight journey in this for its first outing. And I'll do a separate video to give you my feedback on this once I've done that. But for now, the Klein Krios Pro carbon fiber, choroid, fidlock, Transition lanes, adventure, road, enduro style helmet. Thanks for watching. Hey you, if you want to become one of the Ride On people, don't forget to subscribe. Ride often, ride carefully, ride on.